and welcome to this review of my IBM M15 adjustable keyboard. This wasn't a donation, but the person I got it off of let it go for a very friendly price. I'm really glad I got the opportunity to show you this one, as it's kind of considered to be the holy grail of the Model M keyboards. Yes, this is a Model M, the only ergonomic type Model M for what it's worth. It's quite rare because it was never supplied as a standard with any computer. Instead, it was available from Lexmark as an options by IBM accessory. But because it wasn't very popular, it's ergonomic after all, it had a short production span and only a limited number were made and sold. I've previously reviewed the entire Model M timeline before, as well as several of its special versions, such as the SSK, M2 and M13, but the M15 is one of the rarest of them all, and one of the most valuable. Prices fluctuate a bit, but I think those may fetch more on average even than the Mopar keyboard, which is pretty crazy, man, <laughs> if I ever get my hands on one of those. It's somewhat analogous to the Cherry MX5000 in a way, which was the only ergonomic Cherry G80 model, another long-running series of keyboards with a vast array of variations. I don't have one of those anymore because it was a loner, but I did review one of those in the past too. They also fetch good money, and for exactly the same reasons. Ergonomic, therefore no one wanted it, but now they do, etc. The M15 is considered by ergo fetishists to be one of the best ergonomic keyboards ever made, combining a very high degree of adjustability with IBM's well-known and well-liked buckling spring key switches. Adjustability in particular is an important factor in ergonomics, as kind of the point is to adjust it to your preferences, rather than just generic ones that may or may not fit everybody equally well, but the more adjustable a keyboard is, the more it will invariably end up costing to produce. Lexmark spared no expense in making this thing adjustable though, from what little I do know about ergonomics, I say this is done pretty solid. It comes with many feet, front and back, all of which are two-part, and both parts are rubber shod to keep it in place. The long feet are multi-adjustable too, and can be screwed out to whatever height the user desires. It's missing one of the rubber feet here to keep it in place, but I'm not using it in a weird posture anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. The board can be tented, as it's called, as well as split, to any angle desired using this big knob here. <laughs> big knob. Um, if you want to, you can even split them completely, like so, and they'll still tent properly if you want them to. They don't require the other module to lean onto, so to speak. Overall, ergonomically speaking, this is one of the most customizable models I've ever seen, and you could even get a separate numpad for it. Including the numpad, the keyboard would have set you back $200 back in 1995, about $340 adjusted for inflation, but nowadays you'd probably pay considerably more than that for one. Do note that even if you tighten the knob down pretty well, it's still quite easy to split the keyboard, so it doesn't really keep these in place by the force of the knob. You should see the force of my knob. <laughs> anyway, they don't slide around too much to be honest, but that's mainly through the friction of the rubber feet on the table. Of course, the switches are the biggest star of the show because although a huge number of highly customizable ergonomic keyboards have come out in the past few years, the vast majority of ergonomic keyboards in existence use either rubber domes or Cherry MX, so they're not worth using. Therefore, if you want something with switches that are actually good, you need to look really, really hard. And I guess this is one of the very few ones out there. The Model M's buckling springs aren't as good as the Model F's, of course, but man, can you imagine what a unicorn that would be, an ergonomic Model F? Damn! Build quality-wise, it's exactly what you would expect of a Model M. It's excellent. It's got metal back plates in each of the two halves, and this fixing point in the middle is really rock solid, so quite well done there. One disadvantage, though, is that it uses the same shitty plastic stabilizers that the M2 has, and it even uses the same low-profile caps that the M2 uses, so I'm pretty sure they're interchangeable. However, they are still thick PBT with die sublimed legends, so that's an advantage at least. They will last you quite a while. Now, apart from the plastic stabilizers, the M2 is known above all for one thing, the quality of its surface mount capacitors. They're excellent, by which I mean they're absolutely bloody awful. These early surface mount caps are notoriously unreliable, and as such many, if not the majority of M2s, don't actually work. 
I don't know if the M15 has the same problem with crappy capacitors that the M2 has. In fact, I think these are rare enough that they probably don't form a large enough user base to determine whether they're notoriously anything or not. But regardless, this one is fine. Originally, one of the keys didn't click properly, but that was easy to fix. And now it's working perfectly again. It weighs about 1.46 kilos, or in Imperial units, about three and a half Southern Fried Bald Eagle drumsticks. Not super weighty for a Model M, but nowhere near as light as you might expect. Although, of course, I do think it would have been better with a solid metal case like a 4704. I mean, everything is better with a solid metal case, but then again, it probably would have ended up costing three times as much, and even fewer people would have wanted to buy it back in the day. Typing on it is slightly annoying if you're not an ergo weirdo like the people it's actually intended for, but put together like this, it's not too much more than a mild inconvenience. I can't tell how nice it is to use an ergo mode, as I'm not quite that masochistic, but I've heard it's excellent, so there it is, it's excellent. In order to make the keyboard slightly more compact, it comes with a few changes to the layout, such as having the nav keys at the top here, and the arrow keys are kind of jammed into the alphanumeric cluster. Two interesting features of the layout is a second nav cluster here at the left, which is pretty unique, as well as the left part of this split spacebar, which is marked with this curious symbol. Now, this symbol might be familiar to some of you. It means Arrays Ease, which is also something found on some other keyboards, notably some highly sought-after NMB models. It essentially turns it into a backspace key, which is said to be very useful, and is switched on by a small switch at the rear of the keyboard, and if necessary, you can flip it to the other the space bar if needed too, with control shift space. It's not really for me, but I can see how some people would benefit from it. The one thing that's kind of unforgivable though is the left control key, which has been moved over to the right. Now, in order to show why this is such a big deal, please allow me to elaborate. See, I've been playing video games for over 30 years. I'm a real gamer, basically. And if you're a proper gamer, you A, play PC, not console, of course. B, play with mouse and or keyboard, not those revolting controller things. And C, have been doing it since PC games kind of started to kick off, which is roughly the early 90s. And if you've been playing since that time, you should know that control is jump. This is an important immutable fact of life. Control is jump. If you've played Commander Keen, Secret Agent, Crystal Caves, Monster Bash, Duke Nukem, Jazz Jackrabbit, hell, even Math Rescue, or basically anything worth playing from around this time, you know that control is jump. Fact. An Unreal Tournament, which is arguably still the best arena shooter of all time, shows us that this goes for FPS games as well. Remember, Newton's fourth law of motion, control is jump. So we've established now that you need to go and rebind the keys in all your games to make control jump. Okay, got that out of the way. And crouch a C, by the way, as you can see. I didn't think of it, it's just how the gods intended it. Obey. Control is jump. Now, jump is really, really important in most games, so it should be very accessible, and it should be usable while you're using WASD, of course. But with this layout, you can't because it's too far to the right. Normally, it's all the way to the left, very easily found and reached by your pinky finger. But with this, it's in between the second nav cluster and the alt button, and it's very difficult to get to, as well as small and awkward. So this is just not acceptable literally unplayable, get rid of it. Overall, this is a really cool member of the Model M family. Doesn't really look like one, I guess, but it definitely feels like one, and if we're honest, that's what we care about the most, I think. Really goes to show that even when IBM tried the hand at ergonomics, they excelled. I don't know if Unicom still have the tooling for these, but to be honest, even if they did, they would almost certainly never make it. And for once, I think that would be a wise decision, because even if all 20 ergo typists on the planet bought one, it <laughs> probably wouldn't cover their costs. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following as a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.